Say dreams are visions of our memories, thoughts, and fears, as seen by our inner eye. This part scared the shit out of me, by the way. What if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake? Love the label at the end? Yeah, they have a pretty, pretty dope fucking designer. Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares. Maybe that's why people fear seeing the world through our eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. Hellblade, Senua's Psychosis. Okay. Written and narrated by Tamim. Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice is a video game about Senua, a Celtic warrior on a vision quest into Viking territory. But what sets our hero Senua apart is that she suffers from severe psychotic mental illness. So bitch is crazy. For Hellblade was to create a classic hero's journey, a journey of suffering, but one where the fantasy world is not another planet or ultimate universe, but a world that is constructed in Senua's mind. Cray cray and it's not a good way. Putting psychotic mental illness at the center of the experience, a subject that is still considered taboo, and a challenge that was both terrifying and exciting in equal measure. In Hellblade, the starting point was a newly discovered Celtic goddess called Senuna in Ashwell, Hertfordshire. When first discovered, in Ashwell, the name was thought to be Senua, a name which I liked and kept. I wondered if Senua might have been a Celtic warrior like Boudicca, who stood up to the Romans. While the Romans had conquered all of Europe, there was a group of Celts up in the furthest reaches of the Roman Empire that could not be conquered, the Picts. And so the Romans built a wall called Hadrian's Wall that spans across Britain from sea to sea to keep the Pictish barbarians at bay. Thanks for the follow, Dazzle the Togo. Wall, Your wicked awesome sauce is astounding. Thank you so much. With matted hair clumped with lime. And so Senua would be a barbarian Pict in this image. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I don't know how much. Oh, Zeno's daughter. By the way, Dan, when um, a new episode <laughs> of the smartphone in another world is up or whatever it's called in English. history and mystery. And so I made Orkney Senua's home and set the stage for a crisis. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. In the late 8th century, the first Vikings landed on the Orkney Islands. The population of the Picts crashed thereafter, replaced by the Norsemen of the 9th century. Were they wiped out? We don't know for sure, but it would seem likely given the reputation of the Vikings. The Northmen's brutality is legendary. High ranking leaders and chieftains of the tribes they conquered were often offered as sacrifice to their gods. The most brutal of these sacrifices was known as the Blood Eagle. I yeah, the Senua flaying, the blood eagle was terrible. She returns home from exile to find her partner, Dilia, brutally sacrificed to a Norse god by these hellish warriors from a faraway land. I imagine the horror of this moment and how it would have dragged her deep into mental torment. So that's why she went crazy. You'd go crazy too if they fucking sacrificed your man or woman just because he was a tribal leader and he was a great fighter. I came to learn that the Celts had a sophisticated and nuanced perspective on the nature of mental disorder. One term they used was gelt. A gelt is a man or woman who has been driven mad by a curse, battle trauma or grief. The Geld would take to a life in the woods in search of penance, punishment, and purgation. And so Senua became a Geld, cursed by darkness, looking for redemption in the wilds. Another word the Celts used in reference to mental disorders was... Exactly, she was so heartbroken that she went crazy. One who utters the words of God, 
Oh, that's her friend. That was the guy who helped her. Sinner who flees battle into exile and takes on a beastly nature, growing feathers on his body. The character called Truth in Hellblade is based on a little-known person called Finden, an 8th century Irish Celt who was captured and enslaved by the Vikings, but eventually escaped to Orkney where he became a monk. I will tell you my stories of hell, if I may walk with you. Upon meeting Senua, it would be his stories that fuel her quest deep into their world of gods. The Northmen say the world will come to an end. The sun will grow black, the earth will sink into the sea, the stars will disappear, fire and water will meet, flames will play against the sky, the heavens and earth and all the world will be burned, all the gods will be dead, and the warriors of Valhalla and people everywhere. Senua, prepare yourself for Ragnarok, for it is nigh. Wow. So the stage was set for a new adventure, a journey into the Norse underworld called Hell, a vision quest fueled by madness and myth, a fantasy that was created by Senua's own mind, and one that we would experience through her eyes. This is your mission. This is your quest. There is nothing else left. To make a game about a warrior with psychotic mental illness as its central theme was fraught with danger. Mental illness, such as psychosis, is still taboo and rarely acknowledged in a century of cinema, never mind the new medium of games. Where it does feature, it often conflates psychosis and psychopathy associated with a lack of empathy. It is unfortunate that these two words sound so similar that they are used interchangeably in media. I must admit that I didn't have to look very far to discover my own ignorance of the subject. So we reached out to Paul Fletcher, psychiatrist and professor of health neuroscience. Wow, well, they really did their homework on this game. Psychosis is a descriptive term, and it refers to um, having a loss of contact with objective reality. So it's characterized by uh, two main sets of symptoms. One of them is hallucinations, where somebody experiences perceptions when there is no actual objective thing out there to perceive. Me, you're not allowed outside. And the other is delusions, where somebody comes to very often bizarre, unpleasant, frightening beliefs when there's no good evidence in favor of them. There's no doubt about it. The source of the darkness is in Helheim. And the goddess Hela holds his soul there. We reached out to Welcome, a biomedical research charity that spends billions on research and awareness programs aimed at improving health. Mental health hasn't always been presented in the media in a way that is... How long helpful. did it take it to complete? Uh, um, I started at 7.30 this morning. And there are a lot of preconceived ideas Closer to 8, so... Schizophrenia and I finished at about 4.45. So that allows the team to continue to collaborate with Paul You Fletcher do the math, my dears. With those who have did you start a new game this morning, or...? Um, I did start a new game. ...on the condition and allows... Okay audiences to engage with it Never in a way me. that just wouldn't be possible in any other media. Thanks for the follow, I am KN568, love you long time. We were only scratching the surface of thank you, thank you. deep and interesting subject that could enrich and change the very nature of the game. That's cool, thanks so much. Yeah. Pleasure, thanks, uh, it's really interesting for me. I'd love to be involved, it's fascinating. <gasps> love to be involved, fascinating. Our understanding of psychosis is still very much a mystery and ways of treating it are still primitive compared to physical illness. After all, it is easy to see the pain and suffering caused by physical diseases or physical trauma. It is not so easy to see the mental suffering and trauma of severe mental illness. But what if we could find a way to see it? Games are capable of drawing you in for hours on end, playing the role of a character who is different from you, experiencing their perspective, and actively involving you in a world that functions with a different set of rules. If Seriously, we were to this represent is creepy. Psychosis, we would have to simulate voice hearing, a common attribute. But how can we simulate something we have no first hand experience of? Professor Charles Fernyhoe, a leading expert in voice hearing from Durham University, offered his help. Hearing voices is an experience that is usually associated with severe mental illness. And crucially, we know that hearing voices is a part of ordinary life for many people who don't meet the criteria for mental illness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not him in real life. We know voices <laughs> vary 
according to where they appear in space. Voices can appear far away in the distance, they can appear right there in your ear, they can seem to be coming from inside your head. I know, Based right? The they did really do their research. I put together a sound brief and invited some actors to the studio. We recorded the actors using a binaural microphone, which records the 3D spatial position of sound, replicating the way sound is heard by human ears. It gives you an incredible sense that the person you are listening to is right there beside you. So like 7.1 audio in real life. <gasps> Rachel Waddingham from The Voice Collective came to our studio with two this is amazing. to speak to our team. We talked at length about their experiences and they listened to our tests, giving us feedback on how we could improve on it. Everyone nice tracksuit, buddy. He's got Very that DB going on. <laughs> right. Partly because it's such a personal, intense, emotional experience. It's testament to how Ninja Theory have been listening to what the researchers are saying, but also crucially listening to the experts by experience. What they've come up with is so compelling. It's by far the best representation I've heard of what these experiences are like. Other common attributes of psychosis are visions and flashbacks. We met with Recovery College East, who work with and care for people recovering from severe mental disorders. A group of service users gave us their first-hand account of what they experience. Sometimes when the, the vision or the, what we're seeing is too much, we become small to it until eventually we practice don't see anything. The people we spoke to, the stories they told, were fascinating, harrowing and mind-boggling. The reality of what people experienced was vivid, far exceeding what I could possibly have imagined. We went away itching to represent some of these visions and flashbacks in the game. As we all know, my heart is so, love is so far away. Don't you know how I want to feel? Awesome track. Her sort of secretly a stick she found on the ground in the woods. These days are killing me. Now I see deep in me insanity that sun falls. I just want to feel, I just want to feel deeper, deeper. I just want to feel, I just want to feel deeper, deeper. Boy, they really took this whole, yeah, sometimes the world appears like a kaleidoscope and can be beautiful. But yeah, but you're fucking crazy. I mean, where do you draw the line, you know? I gotta find out who fucking does this track. This is awesome. I often see waviness and melting of the walls. It makes me feel nauseous. Are these like what actual people who experience psychosis? Is, is this the things that they see? At times there's nothing to hold on to when I go into a trance. The mind goes blank. God, no wonder she was fucking crazy or going crazy. To God. Work, we continue to hold meetings with Recovery College East over the course of a year and a half, showing them what we had achieved so far and refining the in-game representations based on their feedback. With their help, flashbacks, oh, they talk to recovering patients. In were woven into the story and Who has seen itself. the movie Momentum? The I have an elemental it. being. I I'm have it. excited about being involved. They have described the experience. All right, as ladies being and gents. Um, I have been live since 7:30 a.m. It is now 5:45 p.m. My normal hours are Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays valid, from 9 a.m. Um, to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for joining me with beautiful to frightening. This awesome game that I've been looking forward to for a year and a half, uh, Hellblade, and, um, doors and walls it was amazing experiencing it with you. Thank you so much for the subs to today. Thank you so much for the donations so to, to Brantastrophe, to Cap, to and um, for the biddies. I really, really appreciate it to everyone. Kisses, hearts, and flowers, and all that jazz. I am actually going to kick you over to um, one of my original mods, Grim's Wolf. I will hang out with you there. Feel free to troll him as much as you like. I think he might have his song requests on, and I know for a fact that uh, his uh, fav one of his favorite songs is Call Me Maybe. Uh, but anyway. 